which is yes, monitoring and evaluation, the difference in proxies. Um, so because it's launch time, um, so, <laughs> so I hope apologies to those that are fasting. I, I am very sorry for doing this. Um, I'm also fasting as well. Uh, but I'm just going to speak about so in terms of content, what is monitoring and evaluation. So what is monitoring, what is evaluation, types of and the types of monitoring and the types of evaluation. And I'll share the difference between both of them, even if there's any difference at all, and give us some examples of, of some of this in practice, like um, what you're meant to do when you're doing one over the other. Um, then we can have questions and answers. I hope to speak for, let me check my timing. Time is gone already, um, like 20 minutes. Um, so if you're just joining us, you can still put, put in your name and the location you're joining us from. Um, happy that nobody can take out the food from, from the computer, but let's see if we can have it afterwards. Okay, so what is monitoring? Um, so please, um, can you put in the chat box, what do you think, um, like in your own words, what do you think monitoring is to you? It could be at your workplace, it could be in your home, it could be something, I mean, something related to, so when, when you hear monitoring, what does it mean to you? Um, fastest fingers first, let us see who puts in the chat box what monitoring means to you. Please, it could be in your own words. There's no right, there's no right answer here uh, at this moment. So whatever comes to your mind. Um, so, um, and I'll be reading what we're typing out. I think Toin said monitoring in my own word means bringing on that control. Good. Um, so yes, every other person. So we're looking for what is monitoring to you? What does it mean? What does monitoring mean to you? You can see some of us today, we are invoking the spirit, the, the spirit of the spirit of monitoring into us. So like monitoring spirits, get over everyone. Okay, precious said is an ongoing process to obtain feedback on how work is done, how resources are used to make informed decisions. Thank you so much, Precious. Thank you so much, um, Tony. Please tell us what monitoring means to you. Um, I mean, think about your, your work, what you do, think about your own. What do you even, do you even do monitoring? Do you think you do monitoring? Okay, let's see if we can get one more person. Um, thank you, Toy. Thank you, Precious. Um, who else is putting something? So if there's no one, let's get into it. So I used to say that, I mean, so remember the last brown bag, which discussed, which discussed the history of monitoring. Um, the first thing we mentioned was that prehistory, our great great grandfathers, great great grandmothers, um, they used to um, look at the number of slaves they have. They used to count the number of slaves. They used to count the number of grains they have in their bands, in their silos. Um, so, I mean, you cannot take that away from, from monitoring, right? It's just simply doing that. Some of you, I'm very sure. Um, so if you cooked this morning, can you type one? If you cook this morning, before going to your place of work or your home, if you cook this morning, type one inside the chat box. Um, so you can think about even uh, just cooking. Um, so for those people that like cooking, for example, you see the picture I showed us, the, the egusi soup. <laughs> or you can think about pepper soup if you want to prepare it. I mean, it takes a longer time 
you need to first put water, you need to boil your palm oil. So for every of those stages, you are actually, if you're in the kitchen, you're actually monitoring palm oil getting boiled, uh, water, uh, palm oil getting hot, water getting boiled, your fish. So, I mean, what you do in the kitchen is actually trying to monitor all those processes. And, and it is entirely not different from what, what we do um, in practice, actually. Uh, but now we then relate it to programs, projects, um, business processes, trying to see, yes, what are we supposed to achieve, trying to measure them in that bit. Um, with the analogy of cooking, what that means is that, yes, you monitor like per seconds, uh, per minute. So same thing in m and &E is that, yes, monitoring, you do it like daily, you do it monthly. I'm going to show us some examples of some instruments. You see that, yes, uh, monitoring is serious business. Um, but anyways, um, in terms of definition, in theory, yes, one word should stand out. Is a routine collection of data. So just like um, precious, um, I think, um, is it precious? Let me go back to, ah, okay. So there's so many people who put in, so precious, yeah, said an ongoing process. Uh, thank you, Anna, your monitoring award is the act of checking out or examining tasks over a specific period of time, specific period of time. Um, Isha has said monitoring is systematic analysis and subsequent information collected in projects. Hanaya said he could not do this morning. Okay, good. Uh, process of seeing inputs. So uh, Jay will say process of seeing inputs because within time and resources. Anyways, but think about it that um, is a routine way of collecting information. Um, and you can relate it to the, to the noodles you cook this morning. Um, um, or the food you, you had in the morning. And for those that will be doing after, uh, after uh, it, is the, it is like you cooking that food uh, sometimes closer to 6 p.m. So, um, so one thing you should know about monitoring like is a routine collection of data. Uh, and in, in the context of m and &E, it's like we collect data based on indicators. So there should be indicators for success, there should be activities, there should be processes going on. We collect data based on those activities. Those are monitoring. Oh, you want to train XYZ people, you want to conduct rallies, you, you want to um, know the number of people visiting your website, you want to know the number of people that are your customers for the month of June for the month of April. So most times we say is routine collection of data. It's an ongoing kind of routine. You will see um, later on. And I mean, one thing about it is also that, yes, I mean, the process of you doing that is also to give feedback, maybe for the next month, right? Like how do you do better in the next month? What are the variances from the activities you've already promised that you will do uh, to those that you didn't do. So you need to be checking that all the time. So it's, it's a routine collection of data during project implementation. So while you're having activities um, going on. Um, so let's go to the other bank. Like, so then if monitoring is a routine collection of data um, while you're implementing projects or programs, so then what is evaluation? Can you type in the, in the chat box again, what evaluation is to you? What do you think evaluation um, is? So if monitoring is, is the routine collection of data uh, while you're implementing your project, what does evaluation mean to you? Let's see who wants to try. Yes, every one of us can try. There's no correct answer. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. Please use the chat box to tell us what evaluation means. Let's go to the chat box and see. Um, so 
if Jehu has said monitoring is a process of seeing inputs, becoming outputs within time and resources. Um, Ilya said is a systematic analysis and some subsequent use of information collected in projects. So what is evaluation then? No one is trying. We need one person to try. <laughs> Precious, thank you so much. So, Precious, Ilya, thank you so much. In-depth assessment of monitored data to see if the project activities led to the change that you wanted earlier. Thank you so much, Precious. Um, Ilya said, um, Ilya said, is, is the assessed information collected in the monitoring of the project. Okay, so you're saying monitoring data that has been assessed. Uh, Toyin said evaluation to me is the assessment of the data collected while monitoring, okay? Uh, pressure set chain could be positive or negative. Absolutely, you are correct. Um, evaluation, and I said evaluation is routine to ascertain the data collected whether is acts according, yeah, according to how it's planned. Um, Firechemy said evaluation is checking if all set objectives are achieved. Awesome. Um, so thank you so much. Precious and Anayo just got <laughs> to share. So just got to share one of our first gifts. Um, so Precious, you have 1,000. Anaya, you have 1,000. Uh, Fast Finger first for commenting. So we're going to share the 2,000 between both of you. Let's see if we have more gifts um, in it. So you are uh, correct. Yes, I can see that. Yes, I mean, you mentioned that. Yes, he's looking at, uh, he's trying to look at uh, monitoring data. Um, so, but in, in terms of, uh, in, so in theory, evaluation looks at, yes, somebody also mentioned it, like it tends towards looking at uh, the results and, and why the project started at, at first, even though when we see the types of evaluation, you will see that it is not necessarily about results of the program. Yes, but according to that, right? According to back in the last brown bag, we mentioned Development Assistance Committee, um, which set up a criteria for evaluation, right? Uh, they, uh, they defined it as a periodic, systematic, and objective assessment of a project that is either ongoing, so it could be ongoing, uh, of a program, project, policy, um, to understand how it is achieving the result that it's meant for. So note one thing here, periodic is periodic, is a periodic assessment. So which means that there's a particular time we need to go and conduct evaluation while monitoring is ongoing. Um, one can use the timeline we carry out evaluation to also differentiate it from monitoring um, actually. So, um, so yes, just to note that yes, monitoring is an ongoing process um, within the project implementation, but evaluation is done periodically at certain points in the lifetime of a project, a program, a policy. If you're into business, you can also do m and &E as well, um, depending on uh, the timeline of your business um, as well. So also to note that it is not only uh, the evaluation criteria by that. There's several approaches to evaluation. I mean, um, so the so there's the app made in Africa, which we talked about uh, during the last brown bag, um, which looks at yes narratives of individuals talks about decolonization, um, indigenous approach to evaluation. That is an evolving field you should be interested in, um, because it might not necessarily follow the Western way of conducting evaluation. So um, that is monitoring, that is evaluation. Um, we can then move forward to types of monitoring. I'm going to be uh, fast on this. 
Um, because I mean, you can have wider types of monitoring. Process monitoring, those are the ones you're actually used to, um, which is like monitoring an activity. If you're cooking, for example, you're cooking the egusi soup and the, or the banga soup and, <laughs> and the two chinkafa or, 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 or your gari, whichever one. Um, you are going to buy pepper, put pepper, palm oil, all those. those are activities that you do. You need to monitor them, know when things are happening. In the lifetime of a project, activities are being done, rallies, um, trainings, workshops, sensitization, online platforms for people to sign up, um, Twitter, Glass, all those things you need to monitor. So they are all activities. So there's, there's a routine data collection during those processes. Uh, people come to your primary health care, you need to register them. Um, so, I mean, all well, these that are so well. and you need to I think somebody needs to uh, mute, um, hearing. Please, can you help us mute everybody that is so, so that, okay. So um, you can have process monitoring. You can also have technical monitoring, which looks at your strategy. Um, countries, um, organizations have strategies, maybe two year strategy, four year strategy, which means that for every activity you're doing, you're monitoring your strategy. There's a difference between strategy and activity, um, but this is not the time. This brown bag is not for that. But you can monitor your strategy, which we call technical monitoring. Um, you can monitor assumptions that you have for your programs. Yes, people have assumptions. You cannot start any program without an assumption. You would have an assumption. Um, a program that intends to develop information and education, information, education and communication materials, IEC materials for young people on voting during elections is assuming that, oh, young people do not have the right information on going to vote. So that is why you want to create that IEC material. Um, a project that want to empower women to get into politics um, by providing information on how to join parties, political parties, then it means you're assuming that these women do not know how to join political parties. So you can also monitor those assumptions as the activities are going on. So maybe when you do a workshop or seminars for the women, you need to look at, oh, just check, oh, is it true that these women do not have information on how to join um, a political party? So you can do assumption monitoring. You can also do financial monitoring, which is almost closer to looking at your budget versus expenditure. Um, for some of you that have worked in NGOs that are working with donors, um, there's always a time where you need to do like a budget monitoring. So like you see budget variance, so budgets versus expenditure and the variance. So like, how much are you spending for your activities? So for example, if you say you want to conduct a workshop, how much did you spend versus how much that was in the budget? That is like monitoring those activities in terms of the expenditure, the real expenditure. So those are the types of monitoring. There is a whole lot of types of monitoring that, that you can also get as well. But I mean, we've tried putting together this for, um, now, type of evaluation. Um, you can have different types of evaluation as well. And remember that I said that at times evaluation is not for, is not purposely for results, right? It is also for, it is also for, it is also meant for understanding if a project the target of a project. So who should you design the project for? So you can have a formative evaluation, which is done at the beginning of a project, at the beginning of starting a program, at the beginning of um, drafting a policy, just to understand who does it fit, um, who should be the target, were there past projects that did the same thing, 
that you need to look at or learn from. So you need to think about it in that sense. Um, so you can have formative, some people call it feasibility studies, some people call it needs assessment. Um, so that's a formative, you can have a midterm evaluation, which means that, don't forget we said it's periodically. So there's a particular time you do it. Midterm could be just at the middle of your project or program. Yeah, for a five years project, you do a midterm evaluation, maybe by the third year or by the second year going into the third year. Most people do it to then quickly learn from what they have done in the past two years and use that learning then bringing it forward to the third year. Um, so they do a, an evaluation, looking at all the M and monitoring data, conducting interviews, uh, focus group discussions, questionnaires, and all that. So you could have a midterm evaluation. You could also have a summative evaluation, which I will also time that. Uh, so like an end of project. So when the project ended, so at five, at the fifth year, you do an evaluation. So um, just to keep in mind that it can be an organization that you're monitoring. So you can actually monitor or evaluate. You can evaluate your vision your mission, like are all your projects actually speaking to your mission? Is it driving, driving the mission of, of your um, organization? If it's a business, is it driving your mission? Are all the products that you put out, are they driving your mission um, as an organization? So summative evaluation can be done at the end of um, the timeline you have in pushing out a product or a program at the end of a program, at the end, of a policy. So maybe some people are campaigning for a review of that policy. Policy like timeline could be four years or five years and thinking about reviewing it. Um, then you have the last one, which is ex post evaluation, which we normally do two years after a project ended um, to understand the impact of the project, impact of the project. So it's also called an impact evaluation. Uh, some people know it as impact assessment. Also to note that um, in some places you will see evaluation as a type of evaluation. You can see outcome evaluation, same thing as summative evaluation. It, may, it tries to look at if the project has achieved the objective it was meant for. Um, you can have financial um, evaluation. Um, which looks at the finances, so like value for money for the project. So you can have those kind of evaluation, but I mean, these are the basics for us just to understand the uh, different types of uh, evaluation. So now, is there a difference between monitoring and evaluation? Do you think there's a difference between monitoring and evaluation? Uh, there's a poll. Yes, there's a, there's a, there's a there's a difference, but we use them together because they go on and on. They're, they're almost the same thing. Um, so yes, monitoring, like you have said, ongoing is continuous. While evaluation, yes, there's a particular time we do evaluation. At the beginning of a project, the middle of the project, the end of the project, two years after the project. So there, there's that difference between both of them. Monitoring, uh, this is arguable. Um, is internal. So if you're, if you're working with an NGO who got a grant, so the NGO tell gives you a monitoring template for you to fill. Um, so in that sense, you, what that means is that you are doing the monitoring for the donor agency. That is what it means. So, um, that is why we say it's internal, it's an internal activity. So if you have worked for any donor agency before and you are filling a framework, a monitoring, like something that allows you to fill something monthly or daily, that is monitoring. So that's internal. Eval evaluation, most times could be external. So there's an external person who comes, and does the evaluation, either it's for me TV, either it's at the midterm, which is halfway, either it's at the end of the project. But there's a new movement saying that, why should you actually wait for an external person? You should be doing conducting evaluation on your own. You should be doing monitoring on your own. And I mean, 
I think this is where clones house come in, like the practice of monitoring and evaluation. Even if you're a business, you need to understand the information that your business needs, which is in terms of monitoring, could be data related to monitoring, could be data related to evaluation. Um, very important. So uh, we say one is internal, one is, uh, one is uh, external done by an external person which is also linked to, yes, monitoring being responsibility of the management of a business of a company, uh, while evaluation is the responsibility of the person that granted you or, or, or that commissions you to carry out a program or a project. Um, monitoring gives continuous feedback. I mean, what you did this month, um, if, you are, if you are able to glean some of the information, for example, Number of customers buying X over Y. That is a useful information for you to quickly either tweak the way you're pushing out your products, making products available for the next month. Also for your projects. Um, maybe you are doing sensitization workshops there and there. You could quickly glean from the information you're getting, number of participants, um, participant reach to target audience and use it to quickly tailor for the next activity. But for evaluation, because you need to wait a year, um, so after a year, so that is the only time you can get a feedback. However, there are other approaches to evaluation, which almost stands like, like monitoring. So there's an evaluation ongoing as a project is going. So, I mean, and that is for approaches to evaluation, which is not part of this discourse um, anyways, but I mean, um, so those are the um, differences. Um, so in practice, I think you should understand when you're supposed to be doing monitoring. So there's some terms of references that are specifically for monitoring. Um, and I mean, they're big on monitoring. So the only thing you do is just monitoring. Uh, while there's some projects that just focuses on evaluation. Um, so a monitoring activity can tell you to develop a health register for the Nigerian primary health care. Actually, they are, we have in Nigeria. Um, so for you to understand monitoring means that, yes, you need to develop a template that allows, for example, primary health care to have a record of maybe patients, maybe beds, maybe women coming uh, for antenatal or for postnatal care. Um, so, and, I, and I'll quickly show us an example of um, what this looks like so that we understand that, yes, this is monitoring. This is part of the work that we do. Um, so let me just stop share uh, this and I'll share with us. Um, my timekeeper is telling me that um, uh, time is fast spent. So let me see what I can do. So this is an antenatal care daily register. Will this open? So let me reshare, um, share screen. Got it. I hope you can see. So this is this is an health register. Yeah, I mean, we got this from one of the works that we do on um, looking at the uh, the monitoring tools for primary health care in the northeastern part of the country. So this is a 2013 register. So like this is a daily register. So as an M and E person, you suppose one of your terms of reference might be to develop something like this. Of course, maybe not for the health sector anymore because this is the standardized um, register that is being used at primary health care um, for antenatal care. So each care has their own um, register. So, um, so you can see that this allows somebody to impute this like a daily kind of uh, registers, which has several indicator, um, counseling and testing that was done, um, partners that are HIV positive, if the person is tested negative or positive. Um, so, I mean, 
And here you have the name of the client, you have the date, you have a serial number. This has been entered like every day. So it's a daily register. So if you're going to be carrying out to an m and &E officer that has that terms of reference of creating a monitoring, we normally call it a, we normally call it data collection templates. But I mean, it's a register. So you can think about this register. This is for the ELTS. We also have for education on the EMIS. Um, that's the Education Management Information System. This is for the Nigeria Health Management Information System. There's also this data that goes into the, for those of you that work in health, the Demographic Health Information System, also DHIS uh, too. So most times you are told as a name and person to develop this kind of uh, daily entry form. And I don't, so for also for business, for some of the work that we've done with businesses, we also create something like this, especially when you know your key performance indicators. So for example, it might be the number of, so um, just for example, um, there was a work we, thought we did with bakeries, they were giving loans, um, and we tried to look at their KPIs, like for them to understand which products of their bread they're selling. I mean, they sell small bread, they sell the bigger bread. Some of them sell different types of bread. Imagine that they do not know which one people buy the most until we came in, developed this kind of template, have a monthly um, daily input that shows which one customers are buying. Is it the small bread or the big bread? When we did this for almost a year, we told, we were able to advise some of them, see, um, it seems people like, it seems you make more money doing the smaller bread. It seems this is your environment. People buy smaller bread the most than the bigger bread. So just things like that, that can get you more information. Some people have websites, they don't know the number of people visiting their websites. They don't know the rate of conversion and that is for business. So just for you to think that, think about it that yes, monitoring and evaluation is also for your business. If you have a business, you need to also create a monitoring template to understand what is going on according to key performance indicators. Um, for example, location of your customers, where are they coming from? Do you collect that data so that you can know, um, you can know where to target um, to get more customers? These are some of the things monitoring data actually does for you. Um, I'll show us another one. Uh, um, do I have, uh, let me stop share a little bit. Let me see if I can um, get something else. So this we did for um, the Nigerian justice sector system. Um, I will show us a daily register of a police station. Um, to know the records, to have the daily records of people that are arrested. Um, I think I need to share my screen for us to see. Let me see. Share screen. And I'm going to stay put here. Uh, there's so many examples of these templates. Um, so, I mean, this was for certain I mean, I know you must, if you have visited a police station before, you wonder if they use this. So, but that is another story entirely. Uh, so this is a record uh, in the police station that tends to understand or knows the number of arrested people that come into, um, into the police station. So also the prisons have these, so also um, you can think about the courts, have a court register, which is meant to be completed daily, monthly, because it's monitoring. And once you miss the daily register, you cannot actually get a monthly register. So for every monthly daily register, you have a monthly register because this is where you collate. So you then collate um, every end of the month and have a report uh, monthly. So just to let you know, this is a function of an m &E, not necessarily only evaluation. You are being tasked also to develop monitoring frameworks, uh, monitoring data collection templates. Maybe another brown bag will focus on monitoring frameworks, but this is about 
uh, the difference, making us understand the difference. So you, in terms of what you do as an M&E person, um, like I said, your work will be to develop this. And most times, yes, of course, you feel like, oh, I'm just an M&E person. You need to understand the business process. You need to, to understand the project process of any institution before you can be able to develop this. Of course, you would have people to do interviews, read some of their information before you can come up with um, data collection tools like this. Um, let me stop here uh, at that point and go back to, oops, Let's see. I'm not sure I can find my screen to share anymore, but any, um, uh, what is happening? Okay, let me, okay, share screen. Share. So um, let's go back. Yeah. So, I mean, you could do records, business monitoring, yes, day-to-day -day activity. So, just for you to know that m and &E is not necessarily programs, projects of the development of, uh, of NGOs or INGOs. Is, it also applies to businesses as well, like getting to understand the business processes and developing key performance indicators and developing templates on how to monitor it daily, monthly which can then lead to a quarterly report. Evaluation, of course, um, you can think about visibility studies, midterm evaluation, exposed evaluation of projects. So, and that follows, so here in evaluation, you'll be looking at either the dark criteria, which is like efficiency, effectiveness, um, sustainability, the impact of the project. So you look at the, the six criteria coherence. And if it's an African-based evaluation, maybe you don't need all those criteria. You just want to understand um, how you know. You focus on narratives by the people that are in the programs and use that to make judgments for your evaluation. So those are the kind of two different, the way we do it in practice um, is just for you to understand that, yes, you are meant to be developing monitoring frameworks for institutions, for NGOs, for donors, so that they can collect information from uh, their grantees, for businesses, so that businesses can understand their processes and know where they are in terms of monitoring, but evaluation, yeah, periodically, you will see um, evaluation uh, terms of reference, which allows you to go and conduct evaluation at a particular period while looking at the dark criteria, that is efficiency, effectiveness, sustainability. Um, we can talk about the criteria in another brown bag and not necessarily this brown bag. Um, yes, I recommend this book is good for starters, super good. Um, you can download using the link, of course, we'll share this with us. Um, I, 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 this is a book I recommend that we read, especially the introductory part can show you um, the difference between monitoring and evaluation. I think Alkin, in fact, used projects to even write the book. So his own project, to use it to, to give different pieces. Um, so you can read more using the book. The link actually gets you to the, takes you to the online version, but please, you can buy on Amazon. Um, I encourage you to buy on Amazon um, as well. So there are also other references that you would also get on monitoring evaluation, um, the practice of it, uh, IREs and, and all that. So I think I want to say thank you so much um, at this point. Uh, 